We are sitting inside a brand new 2020 Lexor FL. FL stands for Front Lounge by Pleasure Way. And this is the Front Lounge and it's what makes this coach special. And it's the reason why this has been, at least in the past, one of my favorite coaches. Is it still my favorite coach? Let's review this coach and find out. So this coach is only 21 feet long, meaning it can fit in a normal parking space. A little bit go over in the front of the back, which, you know, normal parking space is around 20 feet here in North America. But this coach will fit pretty much in a normal parking space. And at the same time, you have not only a rear bed and a rear lounge, you have this front lounge. And that means that if someone wants to be back there watching TV or sleeping in in the morning, I can get up, you can get up, we can come to the front lounge, we can have a cup of coffee, we can get on the computer, we can get our email without disturbing the person in the back. And as front lounges go, this is very basic, but it's got everything it needs. And it really works, starting with this simple computer workstation here, which is where I can set up my laptop. I've got two AC outlets down below. I've got two USB ports. Those can be, the AC outlets can run off the inverter, which is turned on right now. Don't have to be running the generator. This coat, they can be running off the lithium batteries. And then this has got the Lagoon tabletop here that you see, which can act as for the passenger side as a workstation as well, or we can use this for dining as well. And the Lagoon table is excellent because it moves around very easily. You can get in and out here by just pushing it and get it into the configuration that works right for you. You can certainly go into coaches which have front lounges, which are a little more luxurious than this, a little bit larger than this. Keep in mind, this coach is barely over 20 feet in length. I'm still giving this coach really high marks for its front lounge. It still works. Pleasure Ways evolved the design with the Lagoon table up here. And this is certainly an example of where the front lounge really works why break it? All right, let's talk really quickly about this coach's dimensions. Its exterior length is 20 feet, 11 inches. Now, the standard parking space here in North America is around 20 feet in length. So this will fit in a standard parking space. It might spill over a little bit on the front and back, but um, it'll, it's certainly, you, you'll be able to pull it into street parking and also into small parking lots, like if you go to a grocery store and things like that. Exterior width standard for all the ProMasters at seven feet, six inches. Exterior height, nine feet, four inches. That means you're gonna be able to go through almost every drive-through. Always check their markings though, because I've been through some drive-throughs uh, in my coach where I wouldn't fit and you don't wanna round that corner and find out that you gotta back up and cause all the cars behind you to also back up to, to get out of there. So nine feet, four inches. The interior height is six feet, two inches, six feet, three inches. And this is a class B with zero exterior storage. All right, let's take a look starting with the outside. Now the Lexor TS and FL are both built on the Ram ProMaster chassis. And as you can see here, I mean, it's got a really clean automotive look. There are no swoopy graphics or things like that. I love the CR Lawrence automotive windows. These are a little bit more expensive, but they just give it a really clean automotive look. You have your freshwater hook up here. You have AC outlets here. You don't have a lot of extra stuff here. Backup camera there. They don't have ladders and things like that or roof racks. Those are not options on the Lexor like you might find on other coaches. There's your LP uh, hookup down below. Uh, so if you wanna have some outside barbecue grilling, there's your trailer tow hitch there. Now, as we come along to the driver's side, again, very clean looking. You do have your service center here. You have some venting. This does use a three-way absorption refrigerator on the inside. So that's why you see these vents here for the refrigerator. That's your Truma Aqua Go instant hot water heater. I love this heater. This is also the Comfort Plus model, which means it has the recirculating hot water lines in it. This is your service center. This is where you're gonna have your city water fill cable hookup and your shore power hooked in here. And it's all in one place, which is great. You also have your, I like this. This is your uh, liquid propane gas shutoff switch here. This is your exterior shower. And then down below here, this is your gravity dump station. And that's fine. I've, I've had coaches that have had macerator pumps and they're fine and you can decide for yourself if you like them or not. It's, for me, it's just one less thing to go wrong. As, as they say, you know, gravity never fails. And I do want to point out, this is not a heated system like we have seen on other coaches like the Winnebago Bolt, which um, provides some heat 
here so these exterior uh, lines here for the dump station don't freeze up in really cold weather. Now, as we're talking about uh, four season capability, let's climb up under the rig and take a look and see if we see any exposed water lines and also what those tanks look like. So as you can see under here, um, there are some exposed water lines here that you can see from the red and the blue lines. And those are the low point drain uh, lines for the water lines. And unfortunately those pieces there, they are exposed and it means in low enough temperatures, they could freeze and they could crack the lines. So I would say as far as four season capabilities, this coach, if you're looking for that, is really not for you. I mean, you could add aftermarket um, heat pads to the tanks if you wanted to, but there's really not much that you're gonna be able to do about having some of the water lines exposed. Now let's talk about tank capacities. This coach comes with a very generous 29 gallons of fresh water and 20 gallons of gray and a rather small 12 gallons of black as well. Your liquid propane is a little bit on the small side as well at 4.7 gallons. So I would prefer to see, per, you know, a larger gray and black water tanks on this coach. I can always fill up the fresh water tank, even though it might be a little smaller if I run low, I can use what opportunity filling or a garden hose and fill that up. There's nothing I can do if my gray and black tanks get filled up. I've got to go find a dump station in order to dump them. So having a little bit larger gray and black water tanks just are going to mean you're going to be able to boondock a little bit longer. All right, let's take a look at the driver's seating position. I have the seat pushed all the way forward and I'm going to move it all the way back. I've also, if you reach under here, I've got tilt, or I've got telescoping, sorry. Telescoping, but no tilt, just so you're aware of that. I'm going to push the steering wheel all the way in. And this is my arm length. It's okay. I've got okay knee room as well. I can maybe put the seat back pretty good back behind me. Got a lot of space behind me. So my seat's still not all the way back. Arm reach is okay, leg room a little bit tight. Now, one thing I want to point out is the emergency brake handle location here. I haven't done this in previous videos, but I have had a couple viewers write to me that own these ProMasters and have said that they prefer having the emergency brake on the center side and not on the driver's side. And I've actually had one viewer say that they've actually, when they got out of the van, they're pant leg got caught on this and when they got out they fell and they were hanging by their pant leg so i've not had that happen but i just want to point that out to you because that could be a safety hazard okay moving on let's take a look at the engine the ram pro master like all rams is a gas engine it has a 3.6 liter gas engine that's capable of delivering up to 280 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque and this is a six-speed transmission. Now, one thing that's really unique and nice about the ProMaster is this is front-wheel drive. It's the tightest turning radius that you're gonna get out of any of the chassis available on the market today. So let's take a quick look at the top here. Now, there's no ladder available uh, from Pleasure Way on any other model, so uh, I asked our intrepid camera operator, Alex, if he could go up top and take a look. As you can see here, I mean, it's pretty clean. You've got your air conditioner here in the back and you've got your vent fan in the front. The vent fan's not hooded. The rain sensor on the vent fan will automatically close it, but you can't keep it running while it's raining. And this particular coach is outfitted with the maximum amount of solar, which is 285 watts. So you can see here, we've got all three solar panels up here. All right, let's head inside and see what this coach has to offer. All right, the first thing that we notice when we come into the coach is our front lounge. So both cab seats swivel forward. Midsection here, we've got our galley. And then opposite that, we've got our three-piece wet bath. And then in the back, we have our lounge slash bedroom. Now, as is the case with almost every ProMaster that I've reviewed, um, you can see there is a step up here into the cab, which is a potential trip hazard. And then in the back here in the lounge, you have another step up as well. Almost all manufacturers that build on the ProMaster have these challenges, but you see there's an overhead storage bin above the cab and it is padded, but inevitably I hit my head <laughs> on these things when I'm getting into the cab. I really like having it open. As far as maneuverability and trip hazards are concerned, um, this coach has a few of them uh, and you need to be aware of them. But 
We do have really good aisle width, as you can see here. They placed the bathroom at a good location close to the entrance, so you get a little more width there. Um, if I'm working at the galley, you can see someone can still, because it's tapered back here, can still swing around me to get to the front lounge. Um, and then there is no, like the television sometimes, and some of these coaches stick out here, and so it becomes a place where you can hit yourself, and that's not the case here. So good width and plus the ProMaster compared to the Mercedes it's about three inches wider I think so that three inches is put to good use in here and you can definitely feel that there is more width in this coach. Here we are sitting up in the cab of the ProMaster and this is pretty bare bones basic like every other ProMaster that we've been in. And keep in mind the ProMaster is the least expensive of all the chassis available here in North America. So this is definitely not a Mercedes Sprinter. And you can tell when you're inside of it. I mean, we have manual seat controls, we don't have heated seats, and we don't have all the safety features that are available on the Mercedes as well. So for instance, the Mercedes has blind spot detection, lane keeping assist, collision detection, and all of those things are not available on the ProMaster. We do have some of the standard fare things that you would see on almost any car, such as the backup camera. You have, I think, six airbags up in here, including the side airbags and the thorax airbags as well. So, I mean, it's a perfectly safe, dependable coach, but you're not going to have all those bells and whistles that you're going to get on, let's say, the Sprinter. But then again, you're not paying $25,000, $30,000 more that you would in order to get those features on the Mercedes. Now, I like sitting up in the ProMaster because you sit very forward. You don't even see the hood of the van. You see up high and you have panoramic windows all around you. And I've driven the ProMaster and I can tell you it's just very pleasant to drive. Um, it's smooth. You can definitely sit in these seats for a long time on long road trips and you're not going to get tremendously tired. All right, let's take a look at the galley here in the FL. And this galley is perfectly serviceable. I mean, it's got everything that you need. You've got your two burner LP cooktop. Induction's not an option, unfortunately, on the Lexor. They've upgraded the sink in 2018. As you can see here, it's a lot deeper and a lot bigger. And I would really appreciate that if I were in the coach. I have a much smaller sink in my ascent. They upgraded the faucet here to be the high neck gooseneck faucet and again those are the little things you appreciate um, just trying to get pots and pans in the one thing you should notice is that there are no counter extensions on other side and that's kind of a pity i mean you do have this cover over the sink but if you need to be using the sink while you're cooking you have very little counter prep space you have a little strip here and maybe some stuff back behind here and that's it so I got a ding pleasure way a little bit there. I, it really would have been nice if they put a flip up counter extension here just so you can set some stuff there. Let's talk about occupant and cargo carrying capacity. We start off with a pretty healthy, almost 1400 pounds, 1395 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. Now, remember, we always have to subtract off the weight of the driver and the weight of the passenger and the weight of a full tank of water. And in this case, we have a 29 gallon freshwater tank, 8.3 pounds per gallon. That's around 240 pounds. Sum it all up. What are we left with for net cargo carrying capacity? 795 pounds. But in this case, on the FL, we've got a well-balanced amount of net cargo carrying capacity and storage in the coach. So thumbs up to Pleasure Way for balancing those. Now, as far as storage is concerned, so you do have a large drawer here, and it's pretty deep. And you'd be able to put pots and pans and plates and stuff there. You can see these are soft closed drawers, which I like, but they're not positive locking they do have the latch in the back which i think is probably rated to i think 10 pounds or something like that so but these are not positive locking these doors are also not positive locking but you do have some storage down here as well it's a little bit and then you have some storage here this this houses some of your electrical panels and components on this side so you have just the space to deal with here and this rear storage cabinet in particular is very wide it goes all the way out to both edges and you're going to need that for your bedding and your pillows and things like that a lot of times we don't think about that but your blankets and your bedding and your pillows they take up an enormous amount of space and this is this type of cabinet is perfect for storing them so once this cabinet is taken up storing all that stuff you still have plenty of other cabinets back here to store all your other belongings let's talk about this coach's electrical system so 
Unlike any other coach on the market, this coach comes standard with 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. Um, you cannot upgrade that at all. It's 200 amp hours, that's it. But I can tell you that that's gonna meet 99% of all of you, it's gonna meet your needs no problem. So that's standard. Also standard on this coach is a 2000 watt inverter. What does the inverter do? See all these outlets in the coach, right? That look like your household outlets. It allows you to plug in standard household appliances into those outlets and it powers them off of your lithium battery. So the inverter just allows that to happen. At 2000 watts means that you'll be able to run things like your microwave and still be charging your laptop and you won't trip any breakers. This coach comes standard with a 2.8 kilowatt liquid propane generator. And then as far as solar is concerned, as we saw up on the roof, you can get anywhere between 100 and 300 watts of solar. This particular coach has 285, 300 watts of solar, but those are optional. And that is something that I wish PleasureWay would consider at least at 100 watts, making it standard, especially at this price point, which is a premium price point for uh, a ProMaster based coach, it would be nice to have at least some solar as standard. Other electrical system upgrades, this coach has multiplex wiring and color touchscreens front and rear. So for those of you who don't know, multiplex wiring means that we can do things like color touchscreens and we can consolidate all those controls into a single color touchscreen panel. Across the galley on the driver's side, we have our 4.9 cubic foot three-way refrigerator you can see here pretty good size uh, we have a separate freezer compartment up top here the disadvantage of a three-way refrigerator is it takes a long time to cool them down so I have a three-way refrigerator and I need to cool it down about a day before I go on my trip in order to get the temperature down and the other disadvantage is in really hot temperatures they struggle to maintain their the temperature on the inside so those are the disadvantages um, the advantages of them are that they don't require you to be constantly drawing off your battery or drawing from electricity they can draw off propane and they sip propane i mean uh, you know you can go a month uh running your refrigerator off your off the propane tank in this coach and never have to start the engine or never have a, a bit of sun at all. So my personal preference would be I would like to have a compressor. If you've got enough solar on the roof like this one has with 300 watts and you've got a lithium battery pack like this one has with 200 amp hours of lithium capacity, then a compressor refrigerator makes much more sense than a three-way refrigerator. Now I'll say the other thing I don't like about this particular model of this refrigerator is notice these controls up here, which lets you set the temperature and also switch between propane battery and shore power driving down the road you have to remember to switch this to battery i wish that this were automatic and secondly i wish that it were not hidden behind the door here where i know i would forget about it it is a convection microwave that means you're going to be able to bake in it as well but let's just take a look so if you want to get something out of the microwave i mean you know you're going to bend down and that may work for many of you. Just be aware of it, try it yourself and see if you like that or not. Having the stove right next to your upholstered couch or ottomans and furniture and things like that. And this is something to consider. We are right next to this. So if you're frying something or cooking, splatters will be splattering onto your ultra leather over here. So just be aware of that. Now the bathroom in the Lexor is a three piece wet bath three piece means that we have a toilet a shower and a sink wet bath means we're sharing all one area here now a lot of people look at this and they say wow that can get wet yeah this is a uh, waterproof paneling it can get wet they do provide for a curtain here and the curtain has velcro and so what you're supposed to do is you can see the rail goes around here you're supposed to pull the curtain around here and if you take a look down here this is something PleasureWay really does well. You can see the detail. This is all sealed here with um, a silicon sealant. And so there's not going to be any water that leaks down in there. Still, this is, I would say, not as waterproof as, as having a single one-piece fiberglass enclosure that we've seen on some coaches, which there are no seams that need to be sealed like that since it's just one piece. So just be aware of that. But 
I like the residential look and feel of this bathroom, considering that we're in a coach that's just barely over 20 feet in length. I've got a Corian countertop and a stainless steel sink here, and I've got storage underneath. I've got a proper medicine cabinet here, and I've got a place to hang a towel. So this is a really, and I've got two AC outlets. Don't underestimate that as well. You need to plug in your razor or curling iron or hair dryer. When I'm seated on the toilet, I've got pretty good width here in terms of shoulder room. I don't have anything behind my head. I can turn around. So it is a small space for sure. I'd say it's probably about three feet by two feet. It works really well and it's laid out really well. And all the things that I need to check off, I can check off while I'm in here. Pleasureway did not have to separately cut out an opening into the shell of the van and insert a window in, which can have leakage problems. I like having the window. It'd be cool if it opened, but I'd gladly trade the ability to open it to have a window like this, which is the standard automotive glass on the outside where I don't have to worry about any leaks. Let's head back into the lounge slash bedroom and let's see how this works out. So one of the things that you, you can do on the, um, the new FL is this is the lagoon table and you can move it from the front to the back as I'm gonna show you here. There we go. This is my first time actually moving the lagoon table. And so I want you to be aware, it's a little bit clumsy and a little bit cumbersome. And then to get the grooves of the table lined up into the base uh, part down here, which is attached, I had a little bit of problems and this is sharp. The bottom of this is pretty sharp here and you can scratch the furniture if you're swinging around on, on the inside of the cab here and they would argue at pleasure way that what i'm doing right now is the counter extension i don't know if i agree with that you can see i put it at the same height as the counter and they would claim that you could use this i don't think it's ideal however as a lounge goes i mean you can't beat it look how wide this sofa is in this FL. It is, I mean, you can get easily three people on this sofa, no problem. It's got thick ultra leather on it. Um, it's got thick memory foam. And because this is a, a sofa, electronic sofa, I can recline and kick my feet up here on the ottomans. And this is what a lounge should be. It should be just really comfortable for you. I've got big, windows on each side and uh, they open their screen so I can get cross ventilation back here. On the driver's side ottoman you get some of your space taken up here because of the television and the new Bose soundbar. This is a 24 inch LED TV back here and you do have the soundbar there which is nice and it does take up some of the seating space there so you have to decide how important is it to have a hanging wardrobe. I think maybe having headrests would be nice. Not only that it would be a little bit safer as well and armrests would be appreciated as well having some type of cup holders i know you know some people think oh, you don't need cup holders i think you do especially in a lounge there are no cup holders back here it's particularly important when you're driving down the road the first time you break they're going to go flying forward and everything that's inside is going to spill inside the inside the coach so cup holders prevent all of that so add some cup holders pleasure way if, if you get a chance you can travel in this coach going down the road you can't have your loved ones back here why because there are actually three point seat belts here two of them so you can get four passengers in this coach in three point seat belts i love that things like ac outlets and usb ports so this coach has both. They've got a set of AC outlets under this ottoman here. And then each side here have USB ports as well. So you're covered here in terms of needing to keep your phone and your tablets charged in the FL. All right, so how do we turn this rear lounge into a bedroom and how does it function as a bedroom? Well, we simply extend out the sofa. Okay, you can unvelcro these cushions here. And if you want, you can fill in the center section here, and this will create one large queen size bed that's 73 by 76 inches of length. Or you can do it the way I like to do it, which is just keep it as two single configurations. In the twin configuration, each bed is 26 by 76 inches. I am 5'10", and you can see I've still got pretty good leg room here and foot room here on the passenger side. It's pretty good. Now, one thing that you know, I don't like is I don't like having this cabinet above my feet, unfortunately. I mean, I get why they put it in there, but it's just, I kick it at night. 
try it out yourself and see if it bothers you or not. Now, and here you can see that I'm actually sleeping laterally. So if you're short enough like me, which is five feet, 10 inches, you're actually gonna be able to sleep fully extended laterally in this coach, thanks to the ProMaster's extra width compared to the Sprinter. I have to say that Pleasure Way's beds and the materials that they use and things are amongst the most comfortable that I felt in all of the coaches that I reviewed. And these cushions are twice as thick as some of their competitors' cushions. And um, they also use a very high quality ultra leather, which is just smooth to the touch. And so in my book, it's always better to find a coach that is already comfortable and doesn't require a bed topper. And I think the Lexor FL meets that standard. What are one of these things going to run you? Well, the MSRP here at this dealership, Happy Days here in Sacramento, remember it's upgraded with the 300 watts of solar. It also has the side and rear screen doors, which are also options. So this thing's kind of optioned out and its MSRP is $127,000. Um, it comes with an industry leading five year warranty. I love that. I wish every coach offered a five year warranty, but you know, in order to get that, it means you're gonna have to pay more money. It also comes with a five year roadside assistance. That's actually coming from Ram for the chassis. Big points as well for having four four-point seat belts here so you can carry four passengers in, in relative comfort and safety. And then this coach sleeps too with that inflatable bed up front, you can sleep a third person. So what are the things that I like about this coach? Well, I love its build quality. Um, this coach, you know, I've gone on the factory tour. I've shown you guys how these coaches are built. They're, you're not gonna really have a lot of problems with these uh, down the road. Um, I love the fact that this has this excellent front lounge, especially in a coach that, that, that is this size. It just gives me a second living area in a coach that's frankly less than 21 feet in length. So those are real positive aspects about this coach. What are the things that I don't like about this coach? Well, it is an expensive coach, but if you want the quality and you want the five-year warranty, you're gonna have to pay for that. There are some things that are just problems for me, things I wish Pleasure Way would think about doing. The biggest one is at this price point, I really think the things like the screens, the side and the rear screens should be standard. And as well, it should come with at least 100 watts of solar. So that's my feeling. That's where I stand on the 2020 Pleasure Way Lexor FL. I still love this coach. It's still one of my top coaches in my book. I would love to someday own one of these coaches and thumbs up to Pleasure Way for creating an excellent coach, well balanced by the way, across the board in terms of energy, layout, design, quality, and I think price point. All right, that wraps it up for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again next time. Take care, bye-bye.